Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are exploring the ancient city of Polonarua. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was the second capital of Sri Lanka after Anurapura. It is one of the best places to learn more about the country's rich history and culture. The area used to be the home of many former Sinhalese kings and was once the resting place of the holy tooth relic of Buddha. The ancient city houses many well-preserved ruins and Buddha statues dating back to the 10th century. The site is located a little over an hour away from Sigiria and just like with Anudapura, we decided to hire a tuk-tuk to take us along for the day. After getting our entrance tickets, our first stop was the old royal palace. It is said that the palace used to be seven stories high, making it one of the tallest buildings of its time. It's a little bit hard to imagine today, but the majestic palace complex supposedly consisted of thousand chambers. The higher floors used to be made out of wood, which decayed over time, hence the look of the place today. So nowadays you can actually only see the thick bottom floors. On the other side of the palace, you can find the audience hall. This was where the king used to hold all his important meetings with his ministers. The outer walls are beautifully decorated with carvings of elephants, with each of them in a unique pose. Only a short walk up north you can find the sacred quadrangle, which holds a compact group of religious shrines. The main showstopper is without a doubt the Vatadaghe, which is a circular two-tiered relic house. It is one of the most impressive buildings here with exquisite carvings and well-preserved details. The moonstone that adorns the northern entrance is said to be the finest in all of Polonarua. The circular relic house has four entrances that lead up to the central Dagoba, positioned at the heart of the structure. Four Buddhas are surrounding the Dagoba, each facing the cardinal directions. Legend says that the Fatadaghi once housed Buddha's sacred tooth relic. It's the one that nowadays is kept in candy. Across you can find the Hatadaghi, which is characterized by its symmetric chambers and pillars. Within the back of the temple you can find three Buddha statues. We absolutely loved this area of Polonarua, it was super beautiful and we actually spent quite some time here checking out all the details and all the different shrines. As you know, it can get really, really hot in Sri Lanka, so we do love to take some breaks on and off. And the best way is by taking a coconut break whenever we can. Our guide also showed us an easy way to eat all the yumminess that you can find inside. You take it. Thank you. Next up, we visited the Rangkot Vehera Stupa, which is over 54 meters high, making it the largest in Polonarua. It is entirely made out of bricks with a characteristic bubble-shaped dome. You can clearly see it was built in the same architectural style as we saw in Anurudapura. So as you can see, Moritz is getting quite tired of all the sightseeing hey, today. <laughs> we've been up, <laughs> we've been up quite long already, since six o'clock, hoping to get here to beat the heat, but <laughs> too bad, <laughs> we're melting. <laughs> ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta -ta. 
So now we're enjoying some wonderful shade uh, on our day trip to Polonarua. It's with a tuk-tuk around two hours from Dambula. Um, and it's an ancient city, a little bit like Anuradhapura. I would say we both really recommend the city as well. I mean, Anuradhapura, of course, is well known as the ancient capital of Sri Lanka. But this one is also so beautiful, especially because there are still so many statues and so many ruins which are well kept or preserved and didn't get destroyed. Mm -hmm, true. So if you're an history buff, I will guess you will want to do both of them. Uh, because, yeah, they still have so many differences and it, like Moritz said here, you have such beautiful Buddha statues well preserved. Price-wise, we're looking at 6,000 rupees, so what is that, around 30 euros. So, yep. yeah, it's quite a budget, but totally worth it. Indeed. I think it was 6,700 now, also because of the fuel crisis and yeah. the uh, economic problems that they're having right now. So they increased the price a little bit, which is still reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually do this with the bike that you can rent here. I heard somebody say it's like a 1,000 rupees for a day, a bike. Or you just take a tuk-tuk like we did, and mm. the driver's like driving us around, and it's all... Yeah, quite nice then. Yeah, so now we're enjoying the view of uh, Dagoba here, uh, or um, a Sri Lankan stupa. Good tip when you're visiting in Dagoba um, is to walk around clockwise, because we see a lot of people like just going crisscross. This is like how they should do it. Mm -hmm. um, and also about... Uh, Posing tips, right. yes, indeed. Because that's also a frequent mistake. I might have made it in the past yeah. myself is if you take a picture with Buddha uh, never turn your back on him so you should always face the Buddha while taking a picture so don't pose with him or anything like that and then clothing wise if you visit all these sites out of respect you should never uh, expose your shoulders or your knees yeah. so just cover them with a scarf mm. or with one of those that they're selling here um, the bigger yeah you find sarongs, sarongs being indeed. sold here everywhere right yeah. I always forget the name um, <laughs> And all these rules also apply, of course, and to, to the pagodas here. Yeah, and take off your shoes and your hat Which can when be you hot. enter. Which can be super hot, that's why we always bring uh, white socks with us, just in case if, <laughs> if the stones or the sand is too hot, we can just slip yeah. in those, and it makes it so much more bearable. So that's a tip, white socks yeah. help. Looks a bit ridiculous, but you'll thank us later. <laughs> After just a short drive, we arrived at Lankatilaka Temple, which was a super impressive sight to see. The cathedral-like corridor leads to a 14 meter high standing Buddha made out of bricks, which was super pretty, even though it is missing its head and also the roof collapsed a couple of centuries ago. Nonetheless, the structure is absolutely breathtaking inside and out. Make sure to take a walk around because on the outside there are also really beautiful carvings on the walls, really beautifully preserved. One sight you shouldn't miss is the Galvihara, which is a group of four beautifully intact Buddha statues. They've all been carved from the same large granite stone. These masterpieces are in pristine condition and are the best example of the high point of Sinhalese rock carving style. Towards the end of our day trip in Polonarua, we still passed by Tivanka Image House, which had breathtaking carvings on the outside. And a little bit further up, there was also a lotus pond, which was most likely used by monks for baiting back in the day. Make sure to bring some snacks or just like us, make a stop at the end of the day. So our driver took us to this delicious place with vegetable rotis. We really recommend to try these. They're amazing. We love them as a snack. So we're having a late lunch, early dinner, and we're having it at Sandra's in Dambula, and it's a buffet with a lot of things. So we have here deviled chicken, some okra potato, something with bananas, 
beans, uh, that's a kind of eggplant in the left corner, and the dal curry to enjoy. We had a beautiful time in this area of Sri Lanka, visiting Dambula, Sigiria and Polonarua really surprised us and it's definitely worth visiting. Now it's time for us to take the bus to our next destination, Candy. So we see you next time, thanks for watching!